Fancy seeing you here! I know it's been a little while since we've had a little update, but what better time to get back in action than right this second? But before we do that, I want to mention one thing, and that is a quick and large thank you. I want to say thank you to all of you, all the fans out there who are enjoying this channel, supporting this channel. We reached over 1,000 subscribers recently, so I just wanted to say again, big thank you to all of you who are out there enjoying this content. It's great to see that there is a community around this type of information, and I'm glad that we're all able to share in it together. Been waiting for a while for another video? Well, good thing you've come to the right place because today we're talking about waiting and not just any kind of waiting, but specifically waiting lists. What's up guys? Welcome back. My name is Travis here on Thumbs Up Run where we talk about buying tickets, selling tickets, making sure that you have all fun with your tickets. We're talking all about season seat wait lists. What are they? How do they work? How long can they take? And are they even worth it? Well, many teams, many organizations, they will actually create a waiting list when they find that there is more demand for their seats than there are available seats left in the building. Yes, there's always gonna be a few seats left behind that will not be allocated for season seats just because they do wanna have the ability to sell some tickets on the open market, get them out to those fans who haven't had the ability to get season seats but still wanna attend those games. All great stuff, people trying to do things for the little man. I mean, it, it seems like a good idea. They try, honestly, they, they're trying. But sometimes there's just so many people who wanna get those season seats, there just aren't any seats left. And as a result, they create the waiting list. Waiting list can take anywhere from one year up to you know 50 plus or more. It might even take a few lifetimes before you can actually get those tickets. As a result, they ask you to join a wait list so that you can go ahead, get your name in line, so that once your number eventually comes up, they'll call you up saying, hey, Time for you to get some seats. And you're like, oh, okay, awesome. Let's do it. Now, there is no requirement to join a wait list. If you wanna buy tickets for a team and you don't want season seats, you can go ahead, buy them on the open market, whether that's from the box office directly, resale marketplace, wherever you buy your tickets from, you can go ahead, do all that. There's no issue whatsoever. But some people, they like to have that connection with the team. They wanna feel like they're part of the action, they're part of the organization, and as a result, they want to own those season seats. Other people, though, they just wanna own them for that resale money, which, I mean, also a very valid option. And then other people, they just want it for the clout. They want to say, hey, look at me. I'm awesome. I got me some Green Bay Packers season seats. What you got, huh? Huh? I don't actually have Green Bay Packers seats, but let's continue. So now you know what a wait list is, but what are the actual benefits of being on that wait list? Well, let's, uh, let's dive into it, shall we? First off, one of the benefits is that many of them are free. Sometimes it's as simple as just putting your name, email, address, phone number, getting yourself on a list, and then you just get periodic updates year after year saying, hey, you're number, you know, 20,000, and now you're number 20,000 minus five, or whatever the case may be. They'll just give you periodic updates year after year telling you where you are in line. Other than just getting a season seat waitlist number, there are a few key benefits such as pre-sale access to tickets. Many people on waitlists across different teams, different leagues, different organizations, they will offer members who are on the waitlist an advanced opportunity to buy tickets before the general public. So you get a waitlist number, you get some pre-sale access, all good things. The last couple of benefits of being on the waitlist, many times you'll be able to get team merchandise discounts and then some other fan experiences such as, you know, fan fests and things of that nature. You might get access to some of those things as well, just being on a waitlist. Now, on the other hand, there are a few downsides to being on a waitlist, not necessarily negatives itself, but there are certain limitations. So number one, there could be a very long wait. Some teams may have just created a wait list for the first time, and so it might only take a year or two to actually get through to the front of the line. Others may have had wait lists for years or decades even, and as a result, it could take you, you know, five, 10, 50, maybe even 100 years to get to the front of that wait list. You may not even have a chance to go ahead and actually buy those season seats at all. Very sad. Other thing, they may actually limit the amount of seats that you'll be willing to purchase once you eventually do get through that waitlist period. Many teams will actually limit you to maybe just two or four seats completely, so you might have to get back in line before you can start adding to your season seat collection. You know, collect and trade. Gotta catch them all. Now, last negative thing I want to mention about being on a waitlist is that it can cost you. And it's not always the case. Many are free. It's not a problem that way. But 
some teens, they'll have a renewal fee, an administration fee, a service charge fee, some whatever they want to call it, basically some kind of renewal fee that you will need to pay year after year after year just to maintain your eligibility on that list. It is possible that you can start adding up, especially if you've been on the wait list for multiple years. Yes, there generally are benefits associated with that renewal fee, but at the same time, it is extra cash that you're putting away that you won't get to see being put towards those seats. Normally, when you do join a wait list and there is a fee associated, associated with it. One, it's usually a deposit towards your future season seats. And then two, there will be that renewal administration fee that they'll charge you year after year just to kind of maintain your spot on the list. If you miss out on paying those fees, it's possible you may just get dropped altogether and all that time waited is now wasted. Now, like I said, some teams, it does take a long time to actually move through those wait lists. Unfortunately, there's no way you can just give an average amount of time it'll take to actually get through a wait list because there are always ebbs and flows in how many people are signing up, how many people are renewing their seats, and how many people are dropping their seats year after year. Is the team doing very well? Is the team doing very poorly? Is there a lot of change in demand for some other reason? Are they making the playoffs? Are they going to the finals? Did they win a World Series? What is going on? There are so many factors in what can make a person want to renew their seats or not. And because season seat holders, if they renew their seats, they don't give them up. Unfortunately, it can mean that they may take a long time for a certain number of seats to actually open up year after year after year. Take a look at the Toronto Maple Leafs, for example. They generally have a renewal rate of 99.6%. On 15,000 seats allocated to season seat holders, that's about 60 seats a year that are being released. So think about that. If the list was 15,000 people long and you're moving 60 seats a year, that's over 250 years just to get to the front of the line. Like, that's many, many multiple lifetimes. You're not generally going to be finding yourself getting the ability to buy those season seats. The one caveat is that if, for whatever reason, there is a large chunk of people who choose not to renew their seats, then it's possible for that list to start moving a lot faster. But again, many of these teams with long historical wait lists generally will have that same problem year after year. Very few people will be releasing their seats. And as a result, moving up on that wait list will take you a very, very, very long time. Green Bay Packers are another example. They have a very high renewal rate, 99.4% back in 2018 to 2019 season. And that means there's only about 750 people releasing seats year after year. That's not that great. And unfortunately can mean that you are waiting, you know, 50 years, 100 years, maybe even longer just to become a season seat holder. When people are born in Green Bay, they're actually putting their babies on that wait list immediately in the hopes that maybe by the time they hit retirement age, they just might be able to start enjoying those season seats and get their name pulled out of that wait list. However, I will say on the whole majority of teams, you will be able to move through these wait lists relatively quickly. But unfortunately, there are some exceptions to the rule. And so those teams, they may take, you know, 10, 15, 20 plus years, maybe even a whole lifetime before you actually get to the front of that line. Now, you might be thinking, if I have to wait 50 years, 100 years in line, one year after another, just to get those season seats, is there a way to bypass that and jump to the front of the queue? And the answer is maybe. So the first way to jump the queue is by buying something called a personal seat license. Just by owning the personal seat license, that's only part of the battle. You have to purchase that just to get the right to be able to renew those seats, but then you also have to start paying the renewal fees year after year just to be able to use those seats. If you guys are interested, I can make a whole video talking about personal seat licenses in depth, but that's the, the shortened version of it. But basically, if you go ahead, buy a personal seat license, then you can go ahead, jump the queue of everybody else, get those seats right away, and then start paying your season seat membership like a normal season seat owner. With that being said though, personal seat licenses can vary in price from as cheap as, you know, 250 bucks all the way up to, you know, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 or more, depending on the team, location, number of seats, all that jazz. Don't like that option? Well, I got another expensive option. It's by joining the queue for club seats or premium type seating. Many teams, they will offer a separate list specifically for premium seating. And as a result, it is generally faster to go through this list because again, those seats will be more expensive. Most part, they're designed for corporate and hospitality type settings and groups. So if that is something that you're looking to do specifically for your business, that could be a good way of going ahead and actually 
committing yourself to getting those season seats. Other than that though, there really aren't that many ways of jumping ahead in line. So you kind of got to either pick, do you want to pay the money up front or do you want to wait and hopefully make it a lot cheaper for yourself, but it just might take a little longer to get through to the front. Now again, not all teams offer personal seat licenses. Not all teams allow you to buy your way to the front of the line. So it really is dependent on your team, league, location, all that good stuff. Now, for me personally, I've actually gone through this waiting list experience quite a few times, sometimes better than others. So I just want to kind of give you an idea of how long it might take you to actually go ahead and get some seats. Let's start off with the Toronto Raptors. I put a deposit down for the Toronto Raptors on February 21st, 2015. At the end of that season, I was able to buy pre-sale tickets for the playoffs, as well as the following season, I actually got right to the front of the line and was able to purchase season seats right away. Took me only six months, give or take, but really not even that. It was a very quick turnaround process for me. I got those seats right away. It was fantastic, wonderful, excellent, and it's all good. But now there is a waiting list behind me as well, and word on the streets that it's taken between three to five plus years to actually get through the waiting list and buy season seats as a new season seat member. So not the worst, but not the best. Let's go to example number two. So Montreal Canadiens, I joined the Montreal Canadiens back on April 1st, 2015. At this time, they didn't even offer a waiting list for full season seat members. It was only for half season seat members. Joined the list, I paid my $39 yearly maintenance fee to stay on the list, got my pre-sale access, it was all good and dandy. And then I got that call December 1st, 2020 saying, hey, you made it to the front of the line, let's go buy some seats, yeah. At that time, they actually had full season seats available, so I went ahead and bought my season seats. It was a great experience, it was a great time, felt awesome, it was totally worth it. Montreal Canadiens went to the finals that year, I was able to get some seats to game home game number two for that series. It was totally worth it. It took me five years to get through the wait list, and I was number 2100 on the wait list when I initially joined that Q. So five years, 2100 seats, it's about 400, 450 seats a year that took for, you know, for turnover. So again, very, very slow process, but luckily I was still pretty far up on the wait list to, so I didn't have to, have to wait that long. And our last example in the NFL, the New England Patriots. I joined what they called The List on December 16th, 2015. At that time, paid my fees, got my pre-sale access year after year, and as of this point in time, I am still nowhere in line to know of. I see on the internet that people are still being placed from those who joined the queue in 2003. And they've been there for about three years now at this point. So I expect this to take another 20 plus years, maybe even longer at the current rate that it's, you know, slowly advancing. So just kind of give you a bunch of different examples on how long it might actually take you to get to the front of waiting lists, depending on the team, league location, all that good stuff. So the final point really is, is it even worth it? Is it worth paying those yearly fees? Is it worth getting in line and just hoping that your numbers are gonna get called at some point? Do you even want to be a season seat holder at the end of all this? Will you even want to by the time you even get to the front, if you ever get to the front? Like, honestly, is it even worth it? I think for the majority, the answer is actually no. People can always go ahead, buy seats on the secondary market, from the box office, from wherever, and just go to the games they want to attend. In Toronto, if you say you're a Maple Leaf season seat holder, they know one, they'll be like, whoa, that's impressive. And two, they'll say, you spent way too much money for those season seats. But everyone has their own uh, opinion on that matter. I am definitely in line still, and I assume I'll be in line till I die. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see about that one. But a lot of times, though, people who are joining these queues, waiting in line, wanting to get these season seats, a lot of people just want to have access to the best seats. They want to like feel part of that community. They want to get access to those benefits. They want to get access to the playoffs at much cheaper pricing. So there are a lot of benefits to getting in a wait list and eventually buying those season seats. But for the majority, I would say it's really not worth it. Might as well just buy them on a per game basis. But really, it's a lot cheaper than being becoming a season seat holder, having to deal with the hassle of trying to move the rest of the seats you don't want to use, yada, yada, yada. It can be a big pain. I want to hear all about your stories of different season seats that you've had over the years, how long you waited, how much you spent, all that good stuff. Leave it all in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button down below. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Great new content coming out every single week. Lots of great links down below if you are looking to buy some tickets, lots of discount codes, promo codes, all that good stuff. All those links that you click down there help support the channel, so thank you tremendously for that again. Also, again, 1,000 subscribers. Thank you, all of you, for subscribing. And see you guys next time.